Now that we've covered the fundamentals of probability, we can relate this back to a normalized z distribution. Recall that a normal z distribution is unimodal and perfectly symmetric. And furthermore, a z distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Knowing this, if we have, say, a standardized test or anything else that can be converted to a z-score, we can ask ourselves, what is the probability of randomly drawing somebody from the population who is either greater than a certain score or less than a certain score? Let's say we have a standardized test with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. We ask ourselves, what is the probability that somebody would score greater than a score of 120? If we just randomly selected somebody who took this test, what is the probability that that person will have scored greater than 120? So x is going to be 120, and we first convert this to a z-score. It's going to be 120 minus 100 divided by 10 which is 2. So that gives us this score, how far it is away from the mean in terms of standard deviations. It's going to be at a z-score of 2 right here. And recall from the 50, 34, 14 rule that this part of the distribution is going to be 50%, and from the mean to a z-score of 1 is going to be 34% of the distribution. And lastly, between a z-score of 1 and a z-score of 2 is going to be 14% of the distribution. And we want to know what is the probability that they have scored 120 or greater. It's a tail problem. So we want to know what is the area in this tail right here. First, we sum up all of these probabilities. 50 plus 34 plus 14 is about 98. It is 98. And then we simply subtract that from 100. Just 2%. We can rephrase this as the probability of randomly selecting somebody from the population who scored 120 or greater is 2%.